Hello everybody. Welcome to our English class. Uh, when we talk about spoken English, uh, I always say one thing. Spoken English is all about what to say and how to say. But when we say what to say, we need words, then uh, let us say some expressions and finally we need different kinds of sentence patterns. When you talk about words, everybody has a question. How many words do we need? And there are n number of words. But I suggest 100 structural words like all prepositions, conjunctions, pronouns and all. And we should know the usage of these words like I, I am, I am busy. So these kind of words, he is, he is there. So he is at the market like this. So focus only with certain words. And the next one is, let's talk about expressions. Hey, come on. Uh, hey, what happened? Oh, let's do it. Let's go here. So these are the things what you are talking about expressions. When I say sentences, uh, you need different kinds of sentence patterns. Like, do you want to learn English? Or do you want to learn Oriya? No, I don't want to learn Oriya. Then what do you want to learn? I want to learn English. So don't you want to learn Oriya? Oh no. So these are the five limited sentence patterns where we have to learn. And now we'll move to the second area is how to say. Well, when we talk about how to say, it all depends upon the pronunciation. Everybody is comfortable with the first part like what to say. Because you know words and then we need certain expressions and then we need different kinds of sentence pattern. We're all comfortable. I know if I give a chance, you can write uh, pages and pages and even tons of uh, material. But whereas, uh, when it comes to the spoken language, uh, when there's a situation, then we'll be fumbled. So now, uh, the other important area is how to say is more important. So well, for this, we first focus on the pause. Uh, when you speak, you should give some gap. Let's take one example. Like, uh, let's take this sentence. I went to the market to meet my friend. When you say like this, maybe your audience may not understand. So the better thing is like, I went to the market to meet my friend. So what did I do? I went. Where? To market. Why? To meet. Whom? My friend. So the best thing is that how best you can give the pause so that you can be understood by your audience. Like you can say, uh, I went to the market to meet my friend. That's the beauty of the language. And the next one important area is the stress. Well, let's take one example as uh, every time we talk about it. Like this one sentence, Sudha is my friend. And again, I can say Sudha is my friend. Sudha is my friend. But if you look at the sentence, all the sentences have the same words, but the way we pronounce it gives different meaning. For example, if I say, Sudha is my friend, that means neither Roja nor Ramani is my friend. Who is my friend? Only Sudha. And if I say, Sudha is my friend, not your friend or his friend or her friend. She's only my friend. If I say, Sudha is my friend, hey, just don't think otherwise. She's just a friend. And if I say, Sudha is my friend, do you have any doubt? So that's the beauty of the language. And you have to give proper stress on the most prominent words to convey the meaning in a better way. And the other important area is intonation. Most of the uh, teachers and everybody try to speak, but they don't follow this intonation. So uh, it, there won't be that much beauty in a, a language they speak. So that's why we say, for example, at a state, uh, if you keep on using the monotone, it gives just like a machine gun effect. So let's see how it varies. For example, if we say, hmm, then the next one, what we say is like, uh, once I went to my friend's house, 
Galayas. Madhu, would you like to have some potato chips? Then I said, hmm? Madhu, would you like to have some potato chips? Then I said, hmm. Come on, Madhu, have it. How were the potato chips? Then I said, hmm. So the basic idea is, uh, the first one has a rising tone. Madhu, would you like to have some potato chips? Then I said, hmm? What did you say? I need to understand. When there's some more clarity, would you like to have some potato chips? Then I said, hmm. Yes, that's a falling tone. And the next one, what we can say is, like, how were the potato chips? Then I said, hmm. So, uh, rise, fall, and fall rise, or rise, fall. When you use this tone, it gives beauty to your speech. So that's why intonation is very important. And let's take one more example. And uh, we often hear some words saying, people saying like, uh, for example, uh, going up uh, or coming up. Uh. So if you know the idea of the tone, we usually say going to movie or coming to the market, waiting for someone, uh, looking for something. So this is how if you know the usage of the tone. So what I suggest you is, first, let's focus on the important area, how to pronounce, like by giving proper pauses, and then by using stress, and the third one is intonation. So these are the key areas where you have to focus. And the next area, what we are talking about is, and everybody asks a lot of questions. So what is the syllabus for spoken English? So this is a big uh, million dollar question. Uh, what do you say? Uh, do you think that there is a particular syllabus? And people say that there, there are different uh, uh, opinions from different people. But I say that uh, there should be syllabus, but with holes. I mean, uh, suppose when I'm working with uh, some kind of basic level people, uh, I have to follow certain strategies with the basic. And if we are working with the teachers and all like our like intermediate level, and we should follow certain areas. And that's why every time it should be modified according to your uh, students. So that is something like tailor-made. It's not ready-made. 